I do not think that Professor Bernal does his own case any good by trying to accuse his opponents of being uh, infected with this kind of uh, bigotry. I think it's very unfortunate, and I think it is one of the reasons why Egyptologists and others do not want to answer Professor Bernal directly, because to answer him and to disagree with him is to put oneself in the position of being accused of being a racist or anti-Semite. Really, of course, a scholar knows most about his own field uh, and doesn't really know all that much about others. For example, your average classicist presumes that Egyptian chronology is in good order uh, in Egyptian history. Why not? They're, they're, they're supposed, they have all these wonderful king lists and, and, and the like. Uh, the problems inherent in, in, in all of this are not, are not really known to anybody but an Egyptologist. Now, you know what a mess your own field is in, but you don't know what a mess the other chap's field is. So the, the, the supposition is always that the other fellow knows more than you know. And of course that's wrong. They have, when you get an Egyptologist drunk, give him a couple of beers, and then ask him what he really thinks about Egyptian chronology, and you'll get quite a different answer from the sort of thing that you'd get in, a, in the printed pages of, 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 of a book. And, and once you realize that that's going on, you realize that we're all in this thing uh, together, and we all have to be exploring. And Martin's been brave enough to do it, not over a beer, but in print, where he can be assailed by everyone left and right. Uh, and hooray for it, say I. Wake up! Take the pillow from your head and put a book in it! It's time for the massive BDP crew at the top of the pile! Black Athena has had a massive impact on black campuses throughout the United States. The implications of Bernal's findings are not lost on those who see classics as a tool of the white establishment. Two floors up in the conference room of the Dean of Social Science, they had a meeting of all of the head of the people developing the world civilization courses. And if I'm not correct, Kamudi, they decided that this book was not one that they should use. So that's the tragedy. That in a university that should be the place where ideas are discussed, no matter how controversial, in a university where someone puts his life work, 10 years of work, and produces a volume like this, that it is not worthy of serious consideration in a faculty seminar, then it's not education that we're talking about, it's mind control. Black Athena is in the tradition of white scholarship, European scholarship, that has looked systematically and critically at the experience of the Europeans in relationship to Africans and Asians, and it has had the courageousness of bringing forth the truth. Uh, Bernal did not start that tradition. That tradition goes way back to the ancient Greeks themselves, including Homer, who acknowledged Africa as the fountainhead of Greek civilization. Now, Martin Bernal's feeling is, uh, poor old Africans, they must have a place in the sun, they must have a share in this story. It's so important to have um, a high culture of the European model that somehow the blacks must be fitted into it. And though that's very well-meaning, in the end it can't help being patronizing. And really it's extraordinarily Europocentric because the great thing for the blacks is to give them a part in the European story. The classics as a field uh, is constituted on the purity, A, B, the Europeanness, uh, and C, the non uh, sort of Oriental, non Eastern, non African, non all of these rather threatening outside things of Greek civilization. Um, so those are very political ideas. I mean, you know, they're defensive, they suggest that there's a kind of pure essence called uh, Europe and Attic civilization. Uh, and at the time that what Bernal calls the Aryan model came into existence in the, in the 19th century, uh, the notion of the Aryan race and racial thinking itself is profoundly political. The new account of ancient Greece's formative history started life in the latter part of the 18th century. Bernal describes it as the Aryan model. It stated that Aryan European peoples descended from the north 
and conquered the local native population in the Aegean. The resulting fusion gave birth to the Greek miracle. It ruled out any influences from dark-skinned Egyptians in the south or Semitic Phoenicians from the east. Now this was not the way in which the ancient or classical Greeks themselves saw their distant past. According to them, they had been living as in idyllic simplicity as tribes around the Aegean and along had come Egyptians and Phoenicians and they had set up colonies in Greece, built cities and introduced the arts of civilization. In Black Athena, Bernal argues that we should in principle return to the ancient account, to what he calls the revised ancient model. This all takes place over 1,000 years before the age of classical Greece, in the Aegean of the Bronze Age. It is during this period, Bernal believes, Phoenicians and Egyptians colonized or settled in parts of Greece. The ancient model was accepted by scholars until the beginning of the 19th century. Uh, and I argue that the reason why it was overthrown was nothing to do with new sources of information. It was that the ancient model did not fit the world view of the early 19th century in which purity was a very good cultural thing and in which uh, Europe was considered inherently better and more civilized than Asia and Africa. Uh, and that the epitome of Europe, which Greece was now seen to be, could not be the result in any way of fundamental Semitic or African influences. It was unthinkable. So it wasn't the evidence from Greece itself, it was in their world view uh, that they found the ancient model intolerable. Science and progress were the new ideals of European civilization in the 18th and 19th centuries. There was a new science for virtually everything, including race. This gruesome endeavor sought to prove that blacks were only slightly removed from apes in intellect. The zenith of perfection was a white man, shown as the Greek god Apollo. This scientific proof was seen to justify the massive exploitation of the African continent that was being undertaken, and confirmed, even to reasonable people, that Africans could never have been a part of European civilization. This created a problem because Egypt was regarded as the cultural ancestor to Europe and Egypt was in Africa. Up until the 19th century, Bernal maintains, the Greeks were admired but 